Today we're going to talk about something which people love talking about and sometimes take the mick out of it. However, only some understand it properly. Welcome everyone to Chasing Tents. Thank you for joining me. My name is Abby and I hope everyone's safe in their houses and fortunately locked down and doing your best to appreciate your local medical staff and also stopping this virus from spreading. I'm going to thank every one of you for supporting me and liking my last video so much, the mask damper over suspension video. I've had such great response, amazing comments. I'm so grateful to everyone and I'm just over the moon. And you know what? It's inspired me and motivated me to make more videos like that. So today it's another day when we're going to talk about wings. Now I promise you, just like last time, I'm not going to make it boring. I'm going to give you some real to life examples. I'm going to get less CDA numbers and physics involved, but more real to life examples to make things really interesting and to get you a better understanding why we've got wings on the road bikes and also race bikes. Now, aero or wings cannot be hidden in motorsport. They are massive part of any motorsport to generate effective downforce and to give greater performance and amazing contact patch. They are a very effective aero device and hence we all can see them. And sometimes teams take it too far and things not only get ugly, but they also get very dangerous. So today's intuitively infotaining video is to look at wings from a different angle. I'm not only with all due respect, try to educate people about the aero wings and all the concepts behind it. But also, most importantly, I want to change some mindsets because there are a lot of people out there who dislike the wings for no reason whatsoever. Now, let's look at four examples from history and I'm not going to give you a history lesson. So please don't switch off or get bored. It's going to be historical examples which make a lot of sense in the present time because like they all say, we learn from history. Now let's go to 1953 with this Norton Kneeler bike. Now I've got a bit of a soft spot for Norton because I've spent a lot of time in Birmingham. They are from Birmingham, uh, England, uh, especially in Digbeth area. And uh, unfortunately they are in a bit of a mess at the moment, but they were a fantastic company who were always great at the Isle of Man TT. So this Norton we, uh, Kneeler bike had a dustbin fairing. Now this was an amazing innovation and gave up to 70 kilometers per hour more than a non dustbin fairing bike. Now these had the lowest CDA values and uh, you know I'm not going to go into how to calculate CDA values and, and drag and everything. That's for another day. So basically these dustbin um, wings were very efficient with aero and unfortunately the problem was that the side winds when a rider is going at pace and side winds would literally throw the rider away. The FIM at that time also banned it uh, because it was just too dangerous. The riders would just get thrown away, uh, especially somewhere like Isle of Man, which is like an island with massive amount of winds, just like Phillip Island or Anglesey in England. Uh, you know, it just you just get thrown off the bike back in the day. So even now on very windy track conditions, the wing angles are either reduced or they have no wings at all. Or surprisingly, from these pictures, you will see that even now they make holes on the fairings of the bike front or uh, somewhere else so the bikes can cope with side winds better. Now the second example is going to shock you. In 1974, MV Augusta, well they had it in 1972 as well, but, but mainly in 1974, MV Augusta turned up to the Belgian Grand Prix with Phil Reed with these amazing wings which look very freakily similar to the wings of 2016 uh, or let's say the modern era. Uh, and I mean, this is 1974. How similar do these look to the modern wings? And again, they were banned because of the team protesting. And to be honest, if you are MV Augusta and you've been killing every the whole competition for 17 years in a row in different kind of, um, you know, like three of 350cc, 50cc, 1 to 5cc, 500cc, you know, anyone's going to complain that, oh my goodness, they've been winning for 17 years and now they've come up with this new contraption. So these wings were like banned by the FIM at that time because um, not only uh, other people said that they could be dangerous, but also uh, in an interview, Phil Reed complained that even though the front was planted in the long straights, uh, but during braking, his rear was very unstable in the middle um, and also at Eau Rouge which is a very famous uh, cur like turn in, uh, in Belgium the bike was all over the place with the side winds and that's another example where you know the how aero was affected not only because uh, of uh, side winds but also the turbulence it can cause and the real instabil instability which I will talk about in a minute. 
Now this third and fourth example is my favorite. In 1977, New Zealander genius Dr. Roger Freeth, who was a multiple championship winning motorbike racer, plus had a doctorate degree in physics from Auckland University. So he was a PhD uh, and design, he designed and fitted aerofoils or wings as we call it today uh, on his Yamaha TZ750 but within three me meetings the wings were banned by the New Zealand Auto Cycle Union so again we can see that the recent banning of the open-ended wings wasn't a new thing. Now this final example is my favorite and it's very meaningful and it's another genius from New Zealand called John Britton and I am a huge fan of John Britton. He, he homemade a super successful a Grand Prix level bike. Yes, homemade. You heard that right. I'll do a special video on this bike because it truly deserves it. Anyways, so the Britain V1000 was 20 years ahead of its time and every part on that bike had to do minimum of two to three things. So the upper and lower bodywork not only generated downforce, but that same wind would then cool the bike through the radiator, which was under the rear seat absolute genius so like other examples you are expecting me now to relate this to modern bikes i can easily do that but there are now what the modern bikes are doing is they're putting little bits here and there just like formula one they got little vortex countering little bits or or kind of say dare i say ground effect clearing little bits here and there which no one really talks about too much they all talk about cooling so i can't really directly relate to this because john Britton was so ahead of his time and he just put it out to the world that this is what i've made in my house and look what I've done and that bike was so successful. So now let's move to the present time and the first thing you're going to say to me you've given some great example Abby but what about now? Why do we need them now? They were banned for so many decades. Why now? And why didn't people use them before in different ways or form? So let's go through this and I'll tell you exactly why. We are in such an era where electronic aids and super amazing tires are actually helping the bike to stabilize and things like mass dampers which I explained in the previous video are nullifying the undue judders and vibrations and most importantly these new super powerful engines on our road bikes and also race bikes negates the, the dreaded drag created from the wings. Also drag and instability from the wings isn't such a huge factor now as it used to be in the past because alongside these wings you've now got drag reduction aids such as wheel covers in front and back also you've got underbody aero aids so everything works in tangent and now as a side note in the most simplest ways drag is explained by for example this notepad okay if it's like this okay not much drag is getting affected you go like this, so you imagine this is your wing on the bike, like that. Okay, simplest example, simple thing. Okay, wings like that, your bike will fly. Not really, but you know what I mean. Wing like that, perfect. Downforce, however, the wind which hits here creates drag. It creates kind of a bit of stopping. The It affects the top speed. Uh, so what I, I was trying to say is we've got super powerful engines and other aids which are kind of helping with all this drag issue. Now this beautifully brings me to the advantages of these wings. All the modern bikes are now so powerful, they are somewhere between 185 horsepower, 210 horsepower, or even more. There are sensors everywhere, but most importantly, some are in the front wheel. And if your bike is constantly wheeling, just like I explained in my carbon fiber wheel video, then the sensors will tell the ECU to cut the power. And you definitely don't want that when your contact patch is everything on the track to gain lap times so the wings help keep the bike planted. The second benefit is braking. Now braking with these wings the bike is super stable because again the aero helps to stabilize the front massively. However these wings, tires and brakes are so effective and so amazing now that on braking the rear can get a bit unstable. So which can really kind of get sorted by the rider, by a dab of the rear brake or most importantly you must have seen in recent times the leg dangle where the rider dangles his leg to equally distribute some weight at the back to stabilize the bike. Now I was going to do a leg dangle video but Sylvian Guntoli got there before me and Sylvian Guntoli who is an ex-world superbike 
champion has has got a new YouTube channel and he explains things in the most wonderful way and I'm a big fan of him. So now you will say if they were so amazing why were they banned? The open wings were more effective but that sharp end to them also than the vortex effect eliminating shark fin style shorter wings came and they were quite sharp and FIM banned them before they completely ripped some flesh off another rider's leg. And then you had another problem, the turbulence effect. Now Formula 1 viewers amongst you will know this really well. This unfortunately kind of destroyed Formula 1 in recent times because there was so much aero disturbance that the car at the back couldn't really keep up. If it was too close it would just can't really stabilize itself and the same thing is with the bikes with these uh, bigger open-ended wings the uh, rear bike had much more instability and the front was juddering like anything and it was all over the place finally in 2016 riders were also complaining to the FIM because they were feeling really tired the arm pump was getting worse because with these wings there were extra forces on the bike and they really had to work extremely hard to keep the bike stable and you know what a tired rider is never going to be an efficient rider. Now let's move on to road bikes which you and me mortals ride. Now let me give you a very uh, nice example with the Ducati Superleggera because I think it's it's a perfect example to explain downforce on, on a bike. The new Ducati Road Legal V4 Superleggera wings are more efficient than their 2016 MotoGP bike. That's unbelievable. On that road bike, it produces 50 kilos of downforce. That's 110 pounds of downforce at 167 miles an hour. It's like you are riding with a kid in front or you are a talented uh, racer who can put his legs in front and ride like this. Now jokes apart, of course they're not going to be handy when you're toodling around High Street, you've gone for a pint of milk or some bread, definitely not. But at a racetrack, absolutely yes. A great example I've got is the Mugello track where the 44 teeth, when they tested the Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory and also MCN tested the Ducati V4S on the main straight you've got a bit of a crest now Mugello or say Donington Park the back straight there's a bit of a crest or Portomeo that that crest at the top now with these wings uh, both 44 teeth and MCN reported that compared to non-winged bike these bikes at Mugello straight were absolutely planted there was no uh, front uh, movement at all it was just absolutely planted so that's a real good example that wings do work but at a certain speed now just before I end the video I wanted to show you something quite simplistic now if we moved from something like this which is an amazing Bell Cafe Racer style helmet so this was the helmets back in the day so if we moved from this to amazing AGV Pista GPR with this amazing wing at the back and that's what I really wanted you to see the wing at the back let me put this helmet here uh, wing at the back now this generates enough forces to help rider neck fatigue also all the juddering and vibrations are gone now everyone thinks this helmet is kind of cool 90% of people now if we can accept these wings we can accept these little winglets here and and cooling ducts and all sorts of kind of um, you know these lines and stuff which are all there to help you and you know what I felt the difference putting this helmet compare to the road version of the AGV helmet and it's a massive difference with neck fatigue so I've actually felt this so if we can accept these wings why can't we accept the wings on the bike and you know what we are humans and when bikes get all these modern wings and modern brakes and modern tires we humans adapt we adapt by dangling our leg we always adapt and that's what human race is so now we also got to have a mindset where we kind of adapt mentally that these wings are here to stay and just like my previous videos of carbon fiber wheels which a lot of people still think they are a bit iffy but I was trying to change some mindsets and that amazing over suspension mass damper device again another mindset changing device so these things are here to help us because bikes are getting so powerful and we now have to have these wings or dampers or all sorts of things to kind of stabilize things and to give us more lap time and guys you know what when you are on the track you're giving it your best you don't understand these little things these dampers or these wings or these uh, anything else say ex expensive shock absorbers, absorbers and, and stuff like that they're all helping us to achieve that lap time so every little helps and I hope you guys you really like this video um, 
in terms of where to buy aftermarket wings from, I'll, I'll put some description uh, links in the description and you can have a look. But guys, I hope you really liked this video. Uh, I hope you didn't find it boring. And if you do like my work, please do like, comment and subscribe to the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll be really, really grateful. Please do subscribe.